Are you looking for a beautiful and iconic piece of music to learn? Well, today I'd like to introduce you to Saint-Saëns the Swan, often popularly known as the Dying Swan. Here are some tips for how you might want to go about learning it. Are you sitting comfortably? Then let's begin. Hi, this is Tommy with Tommy's Piano Corner, the place for returning pianists, or indeed anybody who loves piano, to share tips and ideas of how to get the best from this great hobby. If it's your first trip here, then please do think about subscribing. Simply hit the little icon in the bottom right hand corner of your screen now, and it's all done for you. For a long time, I actually thought that this piece of music was from Swan Lake by Tchaikovsky, and it wasn't until later I discovered, in fact, that it's by Camille Saint-Saëns and it's part of his Carnival of the Animals. I guess the reason for my confusion is probably because it was used to choreograph a beautiful ballet for Anna Pavlova that they called the Dying Swan. It is an extremely popular cello solo, but fortunately there's a beautiful transcription of it by Silotti, which means that we now also have a gorgeous piece of piano music to learn, and it's actually very frequent in encores. So let's dive straight into the piece. To get a hold of the sheet music, then you can download it on IMSLP, although I have to admit I haven't found a particularly clear scan of this transcription or perhaps simply purchase it, for example, from the Pianist Magazine website. When we first look at learning it, you'll notice that it's built using a whole set of patterns that actually can help a lot when learning and memorizing it if you want to memorize. Starting with the left hand, we have a number of basic patterns. They are all very similar, with just slight alterations, and I've highlighted each variant in different colours here for you. Spending the time to get used to these differences will help, whether you intend to play it from the music or whether you intend to memorise it. Even if you intend to play from the music, ensuring a thorough understanding of each pattern will help enormously, saving you the trouble of reading each individual note. In terms of fingering for the left hand, I opted to use a fingering that basically takes the broken octave with five and then one, and afterwards jumps up to use two as the anchor for the rest of the pattern in most cases. As you can see, this same basic pattern is used very frequently, so once you're comfortable with it, it's simply a case of thinking which chord to use, and the notes sort of follow automatically. Now let's think a little about the right hand. In the original piano part, the pattern remains largely unchanged within each chord. However, in the transcription, Silotti has needed to slightly modify the pattern in places to make space for the melody. Because he's chosen to maintain the notion of a cello solo here, and so the melody line is fairly low down the keyboard. Keeping it more in the cello register means it's actually woven into the main right hand pattern. Notice here that he has actually modified the original pattern to accommodate the melody, so spend some time getting used to this. Getting the melody nicely voiced whilst keeping the accompaniment nice and soft is perhaps the first main challenge with this piece. Luckily, the piano register helps us somewhat here, as we generally have a lovely mellow tone as opposed to the brighter tone above. However, plenty of practice, and I use hands separately a lot here, is necessary to fine tune the effect. I recommend paying particular attention to your pinky, as our natural reflex is to slightly emphasize the pinky as it's often playing the melody notes. 
Spend some time working on each of these phrases. I found that the right hand can be somewhat prone to tension due to the very open position of the hand. So keeping a flexible wrist helps here if you have smaller hands, as it avoids the need to maintain a stretch position. A good way to practice this is to isolate each melodic phrase, which is generally three beats, or pair of phrases, so an entire measure, where the melody is entirely within the right hand and practice these segments carefully with just the right hand until you feel super comfortable and you feel that the melody is nicely voiced. The next thing to note with the melody is that it also passes between the hands in a few places. It happens first here just for one single note. And then happens again here, where we go from right to left, then back to right, again to left, and then finally finish on the right. This, of course, then repeats itself a little later in a very similar pattern here. To practice this section first, work out which fingering you will use in the right hand and then work on the left hand only and just add the melody notes of the right hand a little bit like this. The key is to get the melody uninterrupted and smooth, which is a lot easier said than done. Now we come to what I think of really as the middle section. In bars 10 and 12, we have a couple of other interesting little patterns. Notice this new way Salotti has slightly modified the basic pattern in the left hand. He also uses a modified pattern in bars 11 and 13. Secondly, and I think very interestingly, is the way the harmony and melody fit together in bars 10 and 12. If you look closely in each bar, on beat five, we actually have a major seventh interval between the two hands. I found this to be a very useful little mental signpost as it's sort of unusual and helps to remind me of which notes to play when I come to this part. Again, spend lots of time practicing these melody bars hands separately, particularly the right hand. From bar 14 onwards, we start to move back towards the original theme, which returns to us in bar 18. However, let's spend a little time looking at bar 17, and most particularly at the last three beats of that bar. Here we have the left hand walking downwards in broken octaves. And then simultaneously, we have the right hand walking up in broken octaves. The main theme returns and takes us through to bar 21, from where we start to move towards the close. Notice in bar 21, the B natural is actually repeated and accented. In the original cello part, this is a held note. However, the piano doesn't sustain for that long, and given there's crescendo, Salotti has opted to repeat the note. As we move towards the end from bar 22, note the modification in the left hand pattern. You can see after the broken octave that we use first two, one, four, and then four, one, two. Make a mental note of this difference as it'll help you when you come to play it later. The next significant thing to work through is the fourth quarter note of bar 23. Here we need to be very careful to ensure that the A natural is properly voiced which is not so easy, well for me at least, as it's the lower note of the chord. 
Finally, we have bars 26 and 27. Again here, we have repeating patterns in both hands that move downwards an octave each time we repeat them. You'll perhaps have noticed that I haven't really spoken about dynamics and other expressive markings like writ and crescendo and diminuendo etc here. They're all really very well indicated in the score and I would just follow them as your starting point. However, I do think the final part merits a thought. Here from bar 25, we're in pianissimo, so double P. Then we go to triple P and somehow we need to finish on a quadruple P, if that's the right way of saying it. You might want to play around with how you can achieve this without the risk of ghost notes. I mean, a couple of tips from me would be use flatter fingers here and stroke the keys rather than press them straight down. And maybe don't start bar 25 too, too quietly. Leave yourself some room. Perhaps play the left hand ever so slightly louder than the right initially, so you get the impression of more of a tapering off in the overall volume between the two hands. I hope that you found those tips helpful and that you'll enjoy learning this beautiful piece of music. If you're not already, then please do subscribe to Tommy's Piano Corner. Click that little bell icon so you're notified of new videos as and when they're released. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you soon.